So last night I ended up going to the local model engineers show and tell night. And on that night I took what I had made of the pony truck. So this is what I managed to take last night to the club. I got it this far, I wanted to get it a bit further but I didn't manage it, but it doesn't matter. A great night was had and lots of interesting things to see at the club's show and tell. So if your club has a show and tell and you've never been, then make sure you go because there's lots of stuff to see and share information and whatnot, which is which is great. I got some good feedback on, on the pony truck. Where are we up to? Well, this piece that's on the top here is not actually part of the project. That was literally to stop it falling apart. I got the main outside frame tacked together. We got these, the bearing runners put back on they're done i'd also like to add a little thank you to andy who sent me this lovely gift inside we have a selection of small files they look unused the paper is stuck to the files but they're very nice we've got a flat one that's a second cut we have a half round we have a second cut half round what was that for? That was that one. That one doesn't say anything on it. And we have another. Thank you very much for those. Those are going to be super, super handy in the workshop because, as you may tell from some of the videos, I don't have a fully stocked workshop. You know, really, I only started this 12 months ago, collecting stuff, bits and pieces. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. Great addition. I now have more than a large file, a smaller file, and a blunt file. So that's that's great. So I have these pair of proper one inch Imperial by half inch. It's bright bar. I've just given it a wire wheel because it's just gone a bit of surface rust on it. Well, that's going to go across there. So we need to put a hole here to bolt into the top block. And then our two holes here, which as this being bright bar, these are going to be threaded. And these pieces that come down here are going to be Loctited in. Right, so we put the parallels in. We're going to machine it down to length. And we'll find the centre. We'll put an 8mm hole there. An 8mm bolt on the uh, riser block on the axle. And then we'll put the two M1s in, which are slightly off centre. Right, so I've, I've faced that end off now. I'm going to go to the other side. I've set the DRO at zero, and then we'll machine this down to 160. Because I'm using a 20 mil cutter, it's quite easy to work out. So plus 20, 160 plus 20, so it's 180. Right, I got that on. I'll centre drill it now. Finish that off in the pillar drill, I've, uh, I've hit me parallel. Right, so we're doing these other two. Now they are 2mm offset to this, this centre line. They're 135mm apart. Hmm. 
the size all of us ruled that. Right, try again. Some dozy plonker put wrong size all in. Oh, that's better, it's starting now. Ooh, a very nice file. Now the eagle eye will notice that I put a slight chamfer on to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Although you probably won't see it at all. But I'll know it's there. So here is the equalizing bar. And that's going to sit on there. Now all we've got to make is the two hangers for the springs. Bit of 8mm bar threaded each end. As you can see it just gives a bit of relief in case it wants to just gently move side to side. It just gives it that, that bit of play. I've cut these two pieces of 8mm. Now I don't know if I'm going to use these in the end but for the purposes of getting this assembled to see how it works and check it and all that lot we're going to use this so we're going to put a thread on the end there and we're going to put a longer thread on that end which will go in there into the equalizing bar and then we can put the springs on we're going to use the bench drill instead of the lathe to get the thread started using the old die and die stock now because i've not fixed the harrison chuck yet i don't have a chuck that will take the 8mm bar which is a bit of a pain so what I've done is I've set up a vise I've clamped it to the bed and I've put the two jigs that I used to set the 12mm bar for the bearing runners I've set them the opposite way around in the vise so that the die stock will sit between them like so with the threaded rod in the chuck we can then bring it down and this will keep it square because this is what you need to do when you're threading round bar is we need to keep it as square as possible obviously if I could use the Harrison we could actually have a go at thread cutting but we can't until I fix the chuck so this is my only way to get to start the thread and get it square and then once we've got it started we can move to the vise in now I've left it all loose so we can, we've got a bit of adjustment so we bring it down and then and let it find itself and there we are it's already started and then I just use the key just to get it Get it going. Now for you, you might have to put some pressure on the handle. But unfortunately, my spring's decided to die in my handle, so it's just dropping down naturally. See, it's gone tight now. So we undo it. There we are, it started and it's square. I need to put a little bit more goo on. This is really where I could do with some, some soft jaws. Because it does slightly, it does mark these. And then we shall begin. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that should be enough. I'll get the other one done, and then I'll get the other side done, and then I will join you back on the bench. Ta da There we go. They're done. So they're going to go in there. So we can now screw them into the equalising bar. Obviously when it's fully assembled properly, we should be putting Loctite on here. But we just need to check everything out and make sure everything fits and works and does as it should before we uh, fully assemble it properly. Obviously once we can tighten that right down with a Loctite, they'll never come out. So that now should slide in there, just like that. That is what we have. That looks far nicer. Very complicated, but I think it looks really nice. So we've got red springs, and in here we have some blue springs. And now these are die springs. My now mentor down at my local club, who's built a Tinkerbell and has one running, he's got the blue springs on. Now, depending on how much weight it's going to be on the rear end, we may need to swap and change and figure out what the best combination of springing is for the best ride and the best support to make sure that the engine is pushed upwards. So for now, I'm gonna put the blue ones on and I have two sizes. Oh, the red ones are heavy duty and the blue ones are medium duty. So I've got a 38, a 32, a 32 and another 38. So we're going to slide these on, we are going to then put a washer on for now, this is just a 10mm washer, I would like to, once I've fixed the lathe, is put on, make some very nice spring retainers that kind of cup the spring at the bottom so they, so they sit nice, nice and neat. So that goes on there, then the same on the other side. washer and the nut that looks miles better now this is very difficult to do but that's i can just get a little tiny gap by pushing down it's very difficult to do so yeah well impressed looks smart if you've got any questions at all about anything that you've seen in the last few videos on the pony truck, then pop it down in the comment section and I will do my best to reply and give answers. And don't forget, you can click the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be notified when we next release a video. And if you really did enjoy this video, you could click here, because you may enjoy that video. And also, you could click down here because you could enjoy that one as well stay safe laters